Welcome to His Church. We are One Church, Many Locations. If you're joining us for the first time, you're at the right place at the right time with the right people. If you're joining us online, please be sure to like and share this video. Here at His Church, we are a place of the presence of God and the Word of God. We are a house of generational blessing, a house of character change, and a house of honor. Thank you for joining us today. Enjoy the service. Good evening, His Church. We're so
We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. We want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every
to just spill out the gospel. I said, hey, I know, I know that you're not Erica. I know you're not Erica. But I want you to know something else. God loves you so much, and he wants to rescue you from this lifestyle. The things that you've been up to and been doing have displeased him, but he still loves you no matter what you've ever had your hands on or what you've done, no matter what moment that, that, that the enemy has come against you with. The Lord can rescue you. And he can do it through his son, Jesus. There's a thing called sin, and that sin has kept us from a right relationship with God. It's kept us uh, separated from God, and it kept us out of an eternal home in heaven when we pass from this earth. But you don't have to live that life anymore. God loves you so much. He sent Jesus, and Jesus came, and he took your punishment. He took the pain. He took the death that we deserved. He took it for us. He was nailed to the cross, shed perfect sinless blood on that cross, and died on that cross died for us. They let his dead body in the tomb, and on three days later, he rose from the grave. He defeated sin. He defeated the devil. He defeated the curse. He defeated death once and for all. He did it for me. He did it for you. He did it for everybody in this room. He did it for the hacker. He did it for everyone. I sent that message on over, and I said, if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and you repent, that means to turn from your way and run to the Lord, then you will be saved. The hacker wrote back, I really think I could focus on this if you sent me $100. <laughs> I thought, okay, well, at least I did my, what I was supposed to do. I said, I don't have gold for you. I don't have silver for you. But what I have, I've already offered you. Tonight, I want you to know I'm in this room tonight to offer you salvation through Christ Jesus. That's our job at his church. That's our job as Christians to offer salvation through Jesus. We put it out there, and then you have an opportunity to receive that, to believe it, to confess it, and to repent. That means to turn. To turn. Holy Spirit move, Holy Spirit move, Holy Spirit move, Holy Spirit move, Holy Spirit move. Right now, do only what you can do, Father God. Convict the hearts of men and women here, Father God. Not what a man can do, not what a woman can do, Father God, but you only touch the hearts of men and women in this room right now. We bless your name. If you're in this room under the sound of my voice, would you just, everyone bow their heads, close your eyes just for one moment. If you're in this room and you say, I've, I've lived far away from God. I don't have a relationship with him. I need to call on the name of the Lord. I need to believe. I need to confess. I have to repent. I have to turn from my ways and run to the Lord. If you're in here and you say, I need that right now, I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus. I'm going to walk you through that confession. You're saying out of your mouth what you believe to be true in your heart. If that's you, just shoot a hand up to heaven right where you're at right now. I want to lead you in that prayer. I've got a moment to wait for you. Don't be like that hacker. Don't, don't go back to, to your own ways today. Yes, Father God, bless you. Yes, Father God, bless you. Hallelujah. And those of you who've lifted hands in this room, or maybe you're watching online today, if you're here under the sound of my voice and you need to say this prayer, we're going to pray with you right now. Christians in the room, we're going to pray with you. Everybody say this. Just say, Father, I'm a sinner. I've lived my own way, and I've done my own thing. But today, I believe in Jesus. Today, I declare that Jesus is my Savior. I declare that he shed blood for me on the cross. I declare that he was buried and rose again to give me life in heaven and a relationship with you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I believe that he rose again, Father God, to give me power in my life, to save me, Father, from sin. I call on you now, and I submit my life to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and my Savior. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer, you prayed the most important prayer you'll ever pray in your entire life best thing you'll ever do in your entire life, and I have some ushers in the altar. If you did, uh, they're going to begin to walk the aisles now. If you did, raise your hand. Reach out and grab this.
take this booklet. This is a simple, easy read. Man, maybe it's about 15 minutes to 30 minutes. If you're like me, it might take you an hour. But uh, read the book, check it out, and it's going to help you on your way with God. Also, take the card. There's a card. Fill it out and place it in the offering container as it comes by here in just one moment. Uh, it's going to help get you some videos to your phone over the next few weeks just to know what to do next. The Bible says you're a new creation now, and now you do new things. Come on, let's give another big hand clap to them. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, do me a favor. Turn to somebody in the room and just welcome them to the house of God tonight. guys excited to be in God's house midweek come on Wednesday night no better place to be than in the house of God I'm so so glad that you guys are here uh, man we've got a great service planned and uh, God's got some great things in store tonight no matter what plans that we have God orders our steps amen church come on I believe he's gonna do some great things tonight just a couple of little housekeeping things. My name's Pastor Jordan Chrysley, and we're, we're going to receive tithe and offering. If you have your regular giving, you can go ahead and prepare that. You guys are home team crowd. Lots of you guys. Most of you guys are, are here weekly, and so you've probably already done that. But if not, it's an opportunity for you to do that. Um, man, God is doing so many great things. I think about I think about our youth right now. I think about our kids right now. My children uh, fought over Bibles tonight. That's incredible when your kids fight over Bibles to bring them to the house of God. Now, I think they got some, yeah, praise God. I think they've got some reward program they're doing back there. And they're getting kids like tickets and stuff, you know, for rewards. That's a great way to do church, right? To reward kids when they do the right thing. It's getting it in their mind. Hey, we're going to bring our Bibles to church. We're going to bring our tithe to church. And so I'm so thankful that our kids ministry is sowing into our kids. We have got one of the best kids ministries, in my mind, one of the best kids ministries in the nation, in Kentucky. And I'd probably say the best ministry in Owensboro, Kentucky. We take care of our kids. Uh, our director, Kara Kessinger, over all of the zero, all the way up to fifth, uh, she's been in the game and doing that for, man, I think she's been part-time position here, which really is actually a full-time position. When you're, when you're part-time, you're full-time. When you're full-time, you're double-time. So that's how we talk about it around here. So Kara's been doing that for over, I think over 11 years, coming up on 12 years now. And that's incredible for somebody to give their lives to that ministry. I remember we had people in, the, in uh, when I served in that ministry years ago, 15 years ago, uh, Miss Martha. Anybody remember Miss Martha? Yeah, some guys. Yeah, Miss Kim, you remember Miss Martha? She, at the time, said she had been in kids' ministry for like 27 years. Miss Kim, how, how long have you been doing kids? 12 years. Come on, praise God for Miss Kim and these guys that had sowed their life into this and just giving, giving, man, staying in a place. That's so very important. So we're so thankful for you guys and thankful for our kids' ministry. Uh, and when you give, no, it goes to, 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 to taking care of kids in the house of God in the name of Jesus. Let's pray and we'll receive the giving tonight. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you. God, we honor you. We, you. You said, let the little children come unto me. Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. Don't hinder them. Don't keep them away. So we say right now, Lord, back in our kids' ministry, that there's revival happening. Lord, back in our kids' ministry, Lord, there's gifts of the Spirit breaking forth. There's, 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 uh, there's all types of things happening, Father God, healings and miracles, Father God, signs and wonders, Father God, right there, right in our own kids' ministry. I pray at the mouth of babes, Lord, that they would speak your oracles, they would speak your word, they would give you praise. Lord, we bless you. Lord, I pray our kids come out. Lord, they know what the presence of God is like. They know what your Holy Spirit sounds like. They know what your Holy Spirit feels like, Lord. Be with our teachers. Be with our director. Be with, Father God, everybody that has their hand over our next generation, Lord. Be with them and bless them now. We thank you in Jesus' name. And the church said amen, amen, amen. Be blessed as you give, church. Welcome to His Church. We are so glad you decided to join us today. 
If you need anything during the service, just ask one of our ushers or anyone wearing a His Church volunteer lanyard. We have several ways for you to experience church with us. Join us Sundays at 9.30 and 11 a.m., either in person or online, and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. in person for our regular weekly services. Then join us live on Facebook for Prayer, Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. The spring semester of his groups is starting soon. This semester's groups are Golf and God, His Church Basketball, Fishers of Men and Fish, The Face, Nursing Home Ministry, Everyday Faith, Jam Session, Worship 101, Game Night, His Gourmet and Book Club, Fervent, Becoming Mom Strong, Music and Dance for Littles, and Lead and Pray. If you're interested in being a part of one of these groups, pick up a handout at the info booth or log on to the Church Center app to find a group that's right for you and sign up today. Thanks for being here today. Welcome to church. All right, let's give the Lord a big hand clap tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so excited to be speaking with you guys tonight. Uh, man, the Lord's been on my heart all day today, very strongly, and um, I'm doing something tonight that every pastor fears doing. I'm not using any notes. Zero notes. And that's not, yeah, and you know, here's the reason why. I want you to know why. It's because whenever a pastor prepares for uh, his sermon, a good pastor should give time and prayer, most importantly. A good pastor should also, I was told this by a great man of God who, who, uh, kind of taught me up in, in forming a sermon. He said, an hour sermon needs eight hours of prep. And now that's kind of, you know, that's kind of a little bit works, you know, but whenever you're just starting off, this was years ago when he told me this, just starting off teaching messages and uh, producing messages for, for an adult audience, you need to make sure that you know that you know that you know what you're talking about. Now, you're not always going to know everything, of course, but you've got to dissect that. You've got to really get into it, down to the Greek, down to the Hebrew. We've talked about that before. And I'm the type of preacher uh, that, that goes back and forth from two different styles of preaching. I'm, I'm going to teach a little bit why before I get in tonight. Uh, one is manuscript. And if you ever have, have heard of Charles Spurgeon, anybody out there, Charles Spurgeon, great church theologian, uh, Wesley, uh, another great church theologian, uh, these guys produce some of the best preaching that you've ever heard in your entire life. If you listen to their messages, you will weep. You'll, you'll find yourself on your knees. You will weep. But these guys were manuscript, and so what that means is they will write an anointed sermon in times of prayer and fasting, and they will do this, they will read it the entire time, just like that. They'll read back and forth. And that's how they deliver their sermons, right? Okay, so, so as, as ages have gone on, people have broadened their preaching rhetoric. Rhetoric is a word that basically means how they deliver their sermons. And so everybody has a different guy they like. Of course, they, they ascribe to this speaker or that speaker or this speaker because they get excited when they hear them or they have different rhetoric. They have different techniques when they speak, right? So, so you can go back and forth on who you like. Guys do that manuscript. They write it down and it helps people. It's almost sometimes though a crutch where you're almost bound to a, a sheet of paper, you're bound to something that you've pre-produced. Now, not that it's not spirit-led and produced, but God sometimes wants to do a prophetic thing. Amen? He wants to do something new, and he wants to, he wants to totally do something new even through the speaker. Sometimes I've heard speakers speak about this prophetic preaching moment. One, one man was a professor I had. He said, I remember stepping into a prophetic preaching moment, and I had an out-of-body experience. I left my body, went to the corner of the room, and watched myself preach a message that I did not prepare. God moved in a mighty, mighty way. So this, this is always different. But this, this is, we talked about manuscript, but there's uh, extemporaneous preaching. That's when a guy goes based off of just a couple of notes, right? Uh, so tonight, I'm kind of not doing any of that. And it's because, the reason is because I came to prepare it as any good pastor or preacher should in prayer. And I couldn't leave prayer. I couldn't walk out of that moment with God. I couldn't leave. I was in this room. I was on my face right here. I was on my back right here. It was on my knees right here. I was walking around this room, praying over these seats. And just the Lord had led me in so many ways. I couldn't leave his presence. I was hungry. 
How many of you guys in this room are hungry? You're here on a Wednesday night. It's beautiful out today. Of course, you're hungry. We're hungry for the things of God. We're hungry for the things of God. And there's some stirring right now in our, in our nation, and especially in Kentucky. Can you thank God that you're a Kentuckian? Come on, can't you thank God that you have your sweet old Kentucky home? Praise God. There's been a, a revival going on at Asbury College since last Wednesday. Um, it started at 11 a.m. last Wednesday, and they're still in the building. They've yet to go home. A lot of those guys, of course, have cycled out and come back and cycled out. A lot of those students have, have, some of them slept in there. I watched them. I was there just the other day. But the cool thing was, it didn't start there. You go all the way back in revival history, you can see some incredible revivals that happen in Kentucky. 222 years ago was the first one. Actually, 223 years ago was the first one in Kentucky. And it was a revival called uh, the Red River Meeting House. It was at the Red River Meeting House, and they call them the Frontier Revivals. This happened in the eight, in year 1800. All right, uh, uh, James McGrady was the pastor. He had sought the face of the Lord. Many of you guys have heard about James McGrady. He had sought the face of the Lord fervently. I mean, he gave his all in a fasting and in prayer and sought revival across the nation. And they ended up having a camp meeting. This was one of the nations, actually the nation's first camp meeting. So you ever hear about camp meetings, you can go, hey, that, that came from Kentucky. That came from a place called Logan County, Kentucky. And it was at his place. Somebody got some Logan County people out there. His place, his place was the inception of the Second Great Awakening. It really teed up and kicked off the Second Great Awakenings with, with another man by the name of Jonathan Edwards preached a sermon. It's well, very well known, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. If I'd read any of this sermon to you right now, you'd be weeping and crying. When he read this sermon, manuscript style, there was hundreds of people in, people in this venue. And he, the, the story goes that as he read this sermon, that people screamed and wept and cried out repenting because of their sins. There's something that's been denoting revivals across time, and it's a thing called repentance. It's a thing called righteousness. We talked a little bit about the altars of our heart last week, repentance and sacrificing the thing that we need to repent of on that altar and burning it on the altar. We go into a little bit of righteousness and how God wants us to live. And righteousness is basically God seeing us as right in his eyes, saying that you are right in my eyes. I, I accept you as my child. You gain access to the throne room of heaven on earth and after you die. He sees you as right. And there's not anything that we can necessarily do to gain a salvation. In other words, to gain that justification except for believe on Jesus Christ, his son in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There's no works that we can do. There's nothing that we can do other than that. Now, once you have that experience, there's a change and there's a shift in your life. Something happens inside of you. You know Jesus and you know your Savior. And therefore, there's a byproduct. You start to live differently. You start to change. You start to transform. The things that left, the things that, that bothered you, the things that were against you, the things that attacked you shouldn't attack you anymore. You don't have to let them attack you anymore. You don't have to let them attack you anymore. You don't have to let them attack you anymore. You are a child of God most high. You are a daughter. You are a son of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You have dominion. You've been given it by the Father. You don't have to let the enemy attack you anymore. We forget it so often. I forget it so often. This incredible revival that was there in Logan County didn't stop there. It's all about 8,000 people. About a year later, a man who had attended those revivals, who was about 15 miles to the, to the western edge of Kentucky, by the name of uh, Barton Warren, Pastor Barton Warren. And he came out of Bourbon County, and there near, I think it was Paris, Kentucky. Uh, and there... At the Cane Ridge Revival, the Cane Ridge Meeting House, another revival broke out just one year later in 1801. 
It's an incredible moment, an incredible experience where 20 to 30,000 people, military professionals had said there was at least 20 or 30,000 people who came to this meeting. People would show up and they would camp out. They would hang out. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had an event like that where people were so drawn by the Spirit of God and a place of revival, not just a place, but the actual evidence of revival happening and going on where people said, I give up everything, I go and I camp out there at that moment. We do it for tailgates. We give up a whole Saturday to go sit on the tailgate for a game like a Super Bowl. Right now there's about two million people celebrating in the streets the Chiefs win in the presence of Mahomes. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of the Chiefs, and I enjoyed that game, and I was thankful that they won that day because there was a prophecy that when the Chiefs won, revival was actually starting. Did you know that? It's pretty incredible. Mr. Bob knows that. We'd heard that last year sometime. That right there took place, and I was so thankful to see that because it was a sure sign that that prophecy was coming to pass. But now people are in the streets, not worshiping Jesus, two million people giving their time and their homage to a idol and other people besides Jesus Christ. But yet we can't give more than five minutes to the presence of God every day. This is heavy. I know it's heavy. This is something that's been on our heart so heavy. These revivals have been taking place. These revivals took place in the 1800s. It didn't stop there. No, it continued. That was, that was a great heritage for Kentucky. Amen, Kentuckians? A great heritage for Kentucky. You had other revivals in the 1900s, 1906, the Azusa Street revivals, where uh, the spirit fell and the, the times of latter rain came upon people and there was evidence with speaking in tongues, something that had kind of been dormant but not really. It had been in the shadows for some time. And, uh, but it didn't start there either. It started all the way back at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit fell upon those people. There was another one right before that, the Welsh revival. And before that, you, ha you had an Indian revival. And after that, you had a Chinese revival and a, Seoul, a Korean revival. All of these different things can sometimes be overlooked. But what is the common denominator in these situations? It's a people... An ordinary group of people. They didn't have to be pastors or leaders of churches or prayer warriors even. An ordinary group of people who hungered, who wanted something to fill them. Now, I went to this revival the other day. They're calling it a revival. Call it whatever you want. I went to this experience. I went to this moment. I went to this thing. We had other people in the room that went as well. And... Um, I walked into the room, and I, I wanted to see what was going on. I wanted to experience what was going on. And wouldn't you know it, I ended up with my face on the ground most of the time. Didn't see much of anything, actually, other than the carpet. I was sucking carpet and had my head under the altar for a very, very uh, long, extended period of time. I probably sat for about two hours on my knees under my head under the, the stage. And just in the moment with God, and, and it was because after a time of worship and praise, I mean, several hours of this, your body kind of gives up, right? It, it, the strongest of men, and I'm not saying I'm the strongest of men, but the strongest of men can get into something and, and be exuberant and have their hands held high like we should in worship. Men, we should have our hands held high in worship. We should lead our families in the, in the act of worship. We should show them what, what to do in the, in the house of God. But as I'm doing this act and as I'm walking through worship, I start to get weak and to the point where I just have to get down on my knees. And I'm down on my knees because I'm weak in my body. And then finally I get weak because I'm on my knees and my knees start to hurt. And I go, I go to my side and I'm leaning up against the altar. And then I have to switch sides because that side starts to hurt. And so I do the other side. And there's this pain inside of me and, and on me. And, and, and as I'm there, I can hear all the voices of the people around me. It's, it's, it's an interesting deal because it's not really led by one or two people. It's a bunch of youth who are wearing uh, beanies and big baggy pants. It's back in style. But they're up there on stage in the very corner just worshiping. No one's decreeing and declaring what you must do. It's just worship. And the, and the crowd actually took over the worship, and they just sang and sang and sang. And as I'm in that moment, as I'm there on the ground, the, I can hear someone say this, but I knew this was a word from the Lord, and it says, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. And at that moment, I knew God was speaking to me very, very highly. He was saying, this is a moment that every single person needs to get to. 
where they say that I'm not strong enough or I can't do enough. I can't be enough to enter into his presence. It's a humility that God is driving us to in this moment where we get so weak in our bodies and we get so weak in our minds and that we, 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 we get to that place where we, we have to say, yes, God, I am not enough. And in that place, in that place, there's going to be an awakening that shakes the nation. It's already beginning right now. There are colleges all over the United States that are taking on the same exact deal right now. Right now. Lee College is one of them. I saw a post last night. People were just at a youth rally, a, a, a college rally, and kids were still in the room sharing testimony of what God had done for them. It doesn't have to look any certain way. You know, in the past, we've, we want to always make sure and protect uh, uh, anybody that, that's interested in any sort of revival because of doctrinal reasons. Uh, that's important. That's important. You know, uh, today I was telling my daughter uh, and my kids at the table, we have a tradition where we sit at the table, and, and I go through and I want to ask them, Stevie, she's home. Uh, she's in Israel right now, by the way. And uh, y'all pray for me. Stretch your hands out to me. Uh, I've made it three days now and it's, it's been good. Yeah, praise God. But my kids are at the table with me and I'm saying, how was your day? How was your day? How was your day? How was your day? Right? And right now my son, I tell him, uh, you can't say good. You have to give me a different adjective every time. So he's coming up with new adjectives and all this stuff. But after I get to my daughter, she says, well, how was your day, Pop? She's a, she's a sweet one. She's like, how was your day, Pop? And I said, honey, it was so good. You know, my favorite part was getting to see you guys. That's usually what I say. But my second favorite part was, was spending time with the Lord and just giving him my everything and just being with him. We just were together. And I was praising him. And she goes, you know what? I see you like, I see you like holding hands. If, if I could see God as a person, if I could see God as an actual person, I could see you holding hands with him. And you're, you're going around and what's that song, Happy, uh, what's that song? It's like Happy something. They're saying, uh, I can't remember the name of the song now. It's killing me. Dude, it, go ahead. What is it, Jim? You know it? But, but anyway, she says, she, she's, I don't know where she came up with this song or where she saw this song. But uh, uh, gosh, I got to find it now. It's killing me, guys. I'm so sorry. Happy Together. She started singing the song. She said, I can see you and God doing that. Happy together. How is the weather? Yeah, she's telling me this. I'm like, how do you know this song, number one? You're too young to know that song. But she's like, I just see you with them. And, and y'all are just happy together. There's no one else you'd rather be with. Me and you and you and me. So happy together. I thought, man, this girl, she got it. She gets it. And I think sometimes we put so much on what revival needs to be. You know, revival's, revival's different every time. God is a manifold God. He's going to come a bunch of different ways. The problem is whenever you expect him to come a certain way. God, God's not subject to what you think and how you think he's supposed to come. All right? There's been many movements that said, okay, it happened this time, so we're going to put this together, and you're going to stick your head in this bucket, and every time you do, you're going to come out, and the Holy Spirit's going to come over you. And that bucket sits in some closet somewhere right now. Or other, other moves that said, okay, maybe God did come through the water, but maybe, maybe not anymore. Who knows? I, I can't judge that. But what I do know about this is, it's that, the catalyst has been humility and holiness, righteousness, right living. And not that we tried to do something based on works that we could actually accomplish this on our own. No, but when you've been transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ, your life changes. You don't do the things that you did before. You've changed we need to change. And I think when we say we're going to begin to sacrifice something to God, that's when revival really hits. We begin to say, what is the altar? As I said last Wednesday, and I actually can ask for the worship team to go ahead and come on out. What does the altar of your heart look like? Last week we talked about repentance. That is rekindling of fire, as in, as in uh, 2 Timothy talks about. When he talked to Timothy, Paul's second letter to Timothy, he says, rekindle the flame. Another translation says, stoke the flame. 
Another translation says, fan the fire. What is that? That's him saying right there in that very moment, get it hotter. Sacrifice something. Burn something. Because I want to burn for the Lord. There's great scripture out of Psalms chapter 42. Because if, if we're to burn and sacrifice something, we've really got to desire something. We've got to desire a sacrifice. That's hard to even say out loud for us to say, I desire a sacrifice. Something to come off of me. Something that I love and I, that I want and I think is maybe even good. Maybe it's great, but it's not God. I'm going to sacrifice that thing. Our soul has to long for it. Just as Psalms chapter, Psalm chapter 42 says this, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. My soul thirsts for the living God. We've got to desire that moment. And what happens whenever you step into that moment is things have to go from you. Sacrifices have to be made. We have filled ourselves so much with fluff. Can I get an amen, church? We have filled ourselves to the point of fake full. It's almost like you took a bunch of, uh, they, they, they call them corn husk or something like that. Could, you know, get them into a powdery sump and they swell up in your stomach and it would just be something to make you feel full, right? We have filled ourselves with just fluff and sugar. They say the nation is pre-diabetic. Has anybody heard that? If you're not diabetic, you're pre-diabetic. Well, I think that we have a spiritual pre-diabetic diabetes going on. If you're not diabetic in the spirit, you're pre-diabetic because you've been filling yourself with sugar. We've been filling ourselves with sugar and all the sweet things and the tickly, the tickly things on our ears for far too long. But God wants to give us real sustenance that fills us. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are those. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. As you begin to get filled, as you begin to get filled, lots of the things that you need weren't there. You are, we are spiritually malnourished. We, we, we've been eating a diet of glucose, spiritual glucose, for far too long. You know, uh, the, the national uh, pyramid, they've said, is terrible, actually, for you. The food pyramid. At the very bottom, the things that you should have eaten the most, which was my entire childhood, was bread. And all it does is turn into glucose. Made a bunch of people pre-diabetic and diabetic because it just turns into sugar in your body, right? You know, it should have been the other way around, right? And so, so maybe we need a different, a different pyramid, a different food pyramid in the spirit. And maybe righteousness should be a very important ingredient. So you ask yourself, where am I at? Where am I at with my righteousness? Where am I at with my sacrifice? Have I sacrificed anything? Because true return to repentance equals a desire for sacrifice. That gets us to a place of revival, of course. You know, these, these, these incredible revivals that are grow, going on, these things are so very important. They are so very important. They are so very, very important for us to witness this and see these things. So very important. They are stoking a fire in our youth right now. They're stoking a fire in our college-age students right now. So powerful. Just let the Spirit begin to move on you right now. He's moving in this place right now. Fan the flame. What do you do when you start a fire? Has anybody ever watched Survivor? I'm, I think I'm addicted right now to Survivor. They've got all the seasons coming out. I'm just watching them over and over. It's incredible. My son and I, we love it, but... You know, there's a point where if someone gets uh, the votes are the same, they have to make fire. They got to make fire faster than anybody else. Okay, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I'm I'm an outdoorsman, so I love that. And so, when you're beginning to make fire, when you're beginning to do what Paul called Timothy to do in his second letter, to fan that flame, what do you need to do? Well, you need to get into it, right, Frank? You got to get into that fire. I can't stand up here and try to just do that, right? It's not going to do anything. Got to get closer. So maybe sometimes you got to get down about right here. And sometimes, I got this technique when I'm doing fire, Frank. It's like the diamond, right? Just like it just blows it right in there, okay? That's the way. 
okay? But if you're making an actual fire, I can help you, all right? I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor fan. This is close, right? But if my fire is here, what's that going to do? That's going to mess it up. It's going to blow the embers. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mess it up. I got to get, I got to get closer. Sometimes to start a fire, you've got to get down on your knees. You've got to get down where it might look strange. Pastor Jordan, why are you on your knees sitting like that? How do your knees even do that? You're 250 pounds, man. Maybe sometimes you got to get down here. And you got to fan that flame. Sometimes you have to get down for the Lord to move. It's so important. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if you saw my bald spot. <laughs> I don't care. One day I won't have a bald spot. You'll be all bald. No, I'm kidding. I'm getting hair back in Jesus' name. I'm believing for it in Jesus' name. But I'll tell you what, you got to get down sometimes to be able to stoke that fire. And it, don't, it doesn't matter what you look like. Men in the room, can I talk to you directly? It's crazy that, that it's a major percentage of the men that never decide to give an outward expression of worship. But I want to challenge you tonight because we're going to go into this song and, build, and the, the worship team can go ahead and begin to start building it because and we can bring lights down even a little bit. And why don't you just go ahead and stand up on your feet? I want to challenge you tonight to humble yourself before the Lord. I want to challenge you tonight to begin to humble yourself. Yeah, I know you're strong. Yeah, I know you're tough. But you're not enough without Him. That's what God's telling us tonight. That's what God's telling me today is that you're not enough. But His grace is sufficient for you. So begin to come all over this room. I want you to begin to come and to flood into this altar right now. And as we begin to praise God, get down on your knees and begin to soak the fire and to fan the flame. Begin to come from all over this room and just fill this altar right now. God's wanting to do a, a new thing in here. God's wanting to do a prophetic thing in here. So come right now. Come out of your seat right now. It doesn't matter what you look like right now. I know the ground might be cold and it might be hard, but the, the world is cold and hard. And they wanted to stop you for so long to getting close to the Father and to getting into the, to the Lord and the presence of God. Don't let it stop you tonight. Don't let it stop you tonight. Bow down before the King and humble yourself. Put your face upon the ground. Humble yourself. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. It doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter your creed. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter who you are. It matters who God says you are. And he says, you're my child. Would you worship me? Worship me. Worship me. Tonight, we praise you, Father God. We lift you on high. And we say you are worthy of all of our praise. We burn, Father God, at our altars. We burn a sacrifice of praise to you right now. Right now, wherever you're at in this room, just begin to worship him right now. On your knees, on your face, fall before the King of Kings and give him praise right now. Right now, right now in this place, we bless you, Father God. If you call me once to come in, let it fall. We want it all. Your fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and I will be a living sacrifice for you.
just an offering It's right here, my life is here And I will be a living Sacrifice for you The refiner, the refiner I want to be consumed I want to be tried by fire Purify, you take whatever you say take it and have your way with it father god we want to burn for you father god lord burn all the things that we don't need lord we burn them in the altars of our heart we sacrifice to you right now and we say hallelujah 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 Yes, God's doing a major work here right now. In the hearts of men and women, God is touching them right now. Some people are stepping out like never before. And God is going to begin to reward you because of your praise, because of your praise. And not that, that you are doing it for that, but God is going to bless you. I just see bones putting back together right now. I see knees being put back together again. You had a knee problem. You had a knee problem. Uh, Miss Nancy, you had a knee problem. But God's right now fixing the situation. He's fixing the situation. He's touching that right there, right there, right there on that knee and God's transforming it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God comes through in praise. The power of God comes through in praise. Come on, if you need a miracle, come on, regardless if you need a miracle, it's for God's glory right now, Father, we bless you. We say hallelujah, come on. Pastor Tiffany, can we, can we sing hallelujah? In the name of Jesus, we say hallelujah, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Come on, and I just want, if you can lead us, Pastor Tiffany, just in the voices. Yes, just in the voices, yes. Hallelujah. Don't leave this moment. Stay here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
sing that. Lord, we praise you. 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 Just push in for one more moment right now. Come on. Just begin to push into your prayer language right now if you have it. If you don't, you can pray in your understanding. Or you can be filled right there. To the point of overflow. Come on. This is a sweet smelling aroma to the Father. This is a sweet smelling aroma to the Father. 
It's like sweet smelling incense, the most beautiful scent you've ever smelled right now to, into your nostrils, Father God. Right now we bless you. Come on, just unlock the gifts of God right now. Just begin to lift hands all over this room and praise him right now. If you're not accustomed to it, break the custom now. Break the custom now. Break the custom now. Be filled, be filled, be filled right now all over this room. Be filled, be filled, be filled in the name of Jesus Christ. I say infirmity has to flee from you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, defiled spirit, you must flee right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you no foothold. We give you no foothold. We give you no foothold. And we say you must flee because we give you no foothold now in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you nothing. Unclean spirit. Come on, continue to be able to push in right now. Come on, this is, this is exactly what God desires. Yeah, I say, I say, pour out your spirit, Father God, is in the latter rain, Father God. Just as your word, your prophet said it in Joel, Lord. In, in the days, the latter days, Father God, you'll pour out your, your, your spirit upon all flesh, Father God. Sons and daughters, they'll, they'll, they'll begin to prophesy, Father God. Lord, we pray your spirit be poured. Poured out, be poured out, be poured out, be poured out, Father God. Robo bobo so 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 so. Dinda ba da ba ra da ba sam ba da ba ra ba 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 ye na bini ya sam ba ba. Ora ba da ba da ba la sam da bini ya ba 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 ye sha ba 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 ba. Ora ba sam da bini ya sha ba 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 ba. Oh God's breaking barriers in this room. Oh God's breaking barriers. It doesn't have to look any certain way. We get to this place sometimes and we go, well, what, well, what next? This is it. <laughs> this is it, church. <laughs> this is it. Looking for something that's not even there. Revival's in your hand. Revival's in your heart. Revival's in your midst. Revival is already in your midst. Father, we thank you. 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 Yes. Sing that, Pastor Tiffany. You are the of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. Oh, you deserve the glory. Thank you, Father God. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for this moment with you. We thank you, Father God, that we, we know revival is not a far off thing. It's not three hours away. It's not, it's not ten hours away. It's right here with us. We thank you, Lord, that we can enter into any moment. God, we thank you. Yes, in Jesus' name. 
church. Begin to just thank him right now. Come on, praise him right now for how good he is, church. Come on, give him a hand clap in this room. Praise God. You know, uh, I think Pastor was on to it when he said revival's not coming, it's already here. Amen, church. It's already here. And there are different manifestations, but here's something that someone else said. You don't have to go to Asbury to experience revival. You can have it right where you're at. Did you know who said that? A faculty member at the Asbury Revival right now that, that helps to orchestrate. They just said that. I mean, they, they have an influx of people that you've never seen. I mean, I've seen a lots of big crowds, but a continual thing going on, not an hour pop here or a big event there. This is a continual thing that people are just coming from all over the nation. They're coming to see it. This person stood up and said, one, one of the people that helped basically MC it, they're not, they're not over the thing. They, they know who's over the thing. She said, you don't have to come to Asbury for revival. You can have it right in your living.